Hello and welcome to my channel, How To With Paul Henderson. Today's episode, I will be modifying and installing a GM Chevrolet factory authorized bed mat in the back of my pickup truck. I will be doing this on my 2019 Chevy Silverado All-Star Edition V8 with a 5.3 liter Ecotec 3 engine, disabled dynamic fuel management, an eight speed automatic transmission, and a standard size six and a half foot bed with a drop in bed liner. Now you may be saying, why am I gonna be using a bed mat in the back of my truck that has a drop in bed liner? Well, that is because, have you ever tried crawling in the back of the truck with a plastic bed liner? It hurts. If you have a spray in bed liner, you could actually buy the bed mat and just drop it in the back of your truck. And just so you know, I did crawl in the back of a truck that has the spray in bed liner and it still hurts your knees. I go camping and to sleep on the back in the back of the truck with a drop-in bed liner is very uncomfortable. My other truck had a drop-in, uh, had a rubber mat, very comfortable, but no drop-in bed liner. The drop-in bed liner actually protects the sides and the bottom from scratches and dents. A spray-in bed liner looks nice, doesn't last very long, stains easy. It does protect the finish of the back of the bed from scratches until that spray in bed liner gets scratched off, then you can start scratching the paint. And the spray in bed liner does not protect against dents. So, with the drop in bed liner, dropped in the back of my dropped in bed liner, <laughs> will further protect the bottom of the bed and makes it more comfortable to get in and out. And the stuff will not slide around as easy as it does with a drop in bed liner. But because I have a drop in bed liner, I need to modify the bed mat to be able to put it in the back of the bed. I had purchased the bed liner through the Chevy app, which is right here. The price as of this video, which is dated 9-1-2022, uh, was $195. I actually got it for $150. I had used my reward points. I had it sent to Riverside Chevrolet to pick it up there. It was free shipping to the dealership. If you have it shipped to your house, it is gonna cost a considerable amount. I think it was 60 bucks to have it shipped. It's a very heavy box. So I would recommend having it sent to the dealership and picking it up when it comes in. So what I ended up doing was um, it's already installed and modified, perfect fit. So I'm gonna show you in some photo clips um, the steps that I took to make the template. And then I also did a video of me cutting the, uh, the bed mat to fit the back of the truck. To make the template, if you go to your local grocery store, they get these flat pieces of cardboard that comes on the pallets. If they have extra, they'll give them to you. If they don't, go to your local hardware store buy some cardboard boxes, you can use that, or go to your local um, craft store, buy some construction paper, big sheets of it, and you can use that. I had opted for the four sheets of cardboard to make the template. I used uh, tape to uh, tape the cardboard together. Let me go ahead and get this out of the way. So, what you're gonna need, cardboard to make the template, a jigsaw to cut the mat. You'll need a two inch tape to tape the cardboard together. The cutting blade is a DeWalt, 18 teeth per inch. This is a medium metal cutter, a metal ruler, Good pair of scissors. These are kit, uh, kitchen shears, so they'll cut through the cardboard with no problem. A uh, Sharpie. You can also get a pen if you want. And a tire marker to trace the template onto the mat. And some, uh, this is probably a inch tape. This will help you. This will guide. <laughs> This will help you to make the cut easier while you're cutting the mat. Am I wording that right? Because you can follow the edge of the tape. 
Duct tape will probably work even better because uh, duct tape's a little bit thicker, so it'll actually help you guide the blade along the side of the duct tape. And good pair of knee pads because you're going to be on your knees. You're going to be on your knees while uh, trimming and uh, cutting the template and the mat. And like I said, you will see in the fit, uh, photos and in the pictures. Oh wait, <laughs> that's the same. You will see it in the pictures and in the video. So here we go with the slideshow of how to make the bed mat. And after all these photos, there'll be the video on me cutting the actual bed mat up. And I will tell you this, it was a piece of cake to cut. Just have to make sure that you use a medium metal blade and support both sides of the cutting line with either a, oh yeah, you also need some two by fours. I had two of them, you should use four of them, and two tile planks. That will make a big difference because you need to support each side of the cutting line with either the two by four or those planks. The tighter that gap is between, on each side of that, uh, the cutting line, will make it easier to cut the rubber mat. If you have a larger gap, and you try to use the jigsaw and cut that line, the rubber mat's just gonna go up and down and it's not gonna cut anything. So like I said, the tighter it is, the easier it is to cut, and you will have to move the wood back and forth and the tile planks around the lot to get around the different angles of the, the mat. If you just follow the instructions, it should be a piece of cake, and just so you know, and this is like, I guess, a disclaimer, if you mess up your bed mat, I'm really sorry. Don't blame me for it, but just take your time. Don't rush it and it'll turn out perfect. And as you will see, mine turned out perfect. So here we go with the first set of photos. So as you can see in photo one, I taped all the cardboard together. It is the exact same size as the rubber mat. So no matter if you use cardboard from the grocery store or you buy some boxes or you go to the craft store and buy construction paper just make sure that it's taped together to match the exact same size as a rubber mat picture number two as you can see the mat is the same exact size as the template or vice versa you're going to take that white tire marker and outline the edges of the rubber mat onto the cardboard on photo number three you can see that i already took the scissors and i cut the right side, or is that the driver's side? That is the driver's side of the cardboard template first, which it really doesn't matter. You can do the right side or the left side. And then of course, fourth photo, I um, cut the other side. On the next photo, you see them side by side. And as you can see, they are identical in shape and size. On this photo, you're gonna take the template, put it in the back of the truck, and you're gonna get a pretty good idea of what you need to be cutting or trimming off to make that template fit in the back of the truck. So I guesstimated that I had to cut off a half an inch off around each of the wheel wells so I did that first because I wanted to make sure that I got the wheel wells to fit perfectly because that is how you're going to keep the template in the center of the uh, back of the truck. And when you do the cutting and you measure in like a half an inch, well, at least on mine is a half an inch. I don't know what it would be on yours if you have a different style of truck. Make sure you stay at the exact same angles as that are on the template now. Don't try to make rounded edges. If they're squared off on the template, keep them the same direction. Just go into the template by like a half an inch, quarter inch, whatever you end up cutting it at. The next photo, start with one of the corners and start um, trimming it away. What you can do, you can use a pencil and mark in how far you think you need to make that cut. You can take the template out of the truck and put it on the ground and then trim it that way, put it back in take it back out, you know, just keep going back and forth. 
Like I said, take your time because you only get one shot at cutting that mat the right way. And here's some close-up photos. So this photo is the right rear. It took me about 20 minutes to get this corner exactly how I wanted it to be. If you don't have a drop-in bed liner, you don't have that little uh, jetting out spot that is in front of where there would be a 12 volt outlet. And it's the same thing on the other side. So here is the rear left photo. This wasn't uh, too bad to cut because once I did the other side, I realized how much I had to cut off of this side. Photo number three is the left wheel well housing, I guess you would call it. And as you can see, I got it to fit pretty tight around there. And that's exactly what you want. You want the left and the right side to be tight and you wanna cut the same amount off of each side. That way, you know, it's gonna be centered. And here is the front left corner. This has a, in the middle, of the photo you will see uh, next to the wheel well and that little odd angle I had to cut off a little extra if you don't have a drop-in bed liner I don't know what's behind there but I know that I had to cut off a significant little chunk of um, cardboard off of that one little piece right there and as you can see in the far left of the corner I didn't have to cut anything off of there and I wrote do not cut this photo is the front right. And same thing, there's a small little angle there where I didn't have to cut anything. And I just had to cut off, I believe it was like a half an inch off of the front right. And then the same thing inside the, in between the wheel well and that one little angled piece. And this is the right wheel well housing. Same exact thing, nice and tight fit. So after you modify the template to fit in the back of the truck perfectly, you're going to take the template, put it on top of the rubber mat, and you're going to check all the corners just to see how well they line up. So the first photo is the right rear. The next photo is the left rear. And then this is the left wheel wheel cutout. And this photo is the front left, and as you can see, on the, uh, on the front left of it, it says no cut. <laughs> it's upside down. Anyway, and you, uh, here you can see how much I had to cut off of that one piece between the wheel wheel housing because it has that uh, angle and drop in bed liner. And then this photo is the front left hand corner. And once again, you can see that one little piece where it says no cut. And it looks like about a half an inch off of everywhere. Now you can see on the wheel well, cut out that I need to cut off a little bit more of the cardboard there don't worry about that that could be modified after you trace the cardboard template onto the mat or you can go ahead and cut it cut it right here and there make it more straighter because you want to keep the same exact lines that are on the rubber mat you don't want to get away from that and then here is the passenger side wheel well cut out and as you can see, the gap is about the same all the way around. So once that is all done, you're gonna take that tire marker and trace that template onto the rubber mat. You might have to make three or four passes with that tire marker to get it nice and solid. And this is what the rubber mat looks like in the back of the truck with the white lines. I just wanted to put it in there to double check it just to make sure that looks like they all line up. And as you can see, it looks like they're gonna line up perfectly. Because once you cut this, if you need to cut off like an eighth of an inch more, you will not be able to. <laughs> you might be able to if you use a piece of plywood underneath it and then put some clamps on each side of that, uh, the spot where you're cutting. But you won't be able to do it if the mat is off of the ground because the mat, the mat is gonna bounce up and down and it's not going to cut the rubber no matter how slow or how fast you go. You might be able to score it repeatedly and then maybe use a hacksaw blade to do it. Um, where there's a will, there's a way it can be done. Just so you know, 
I did get this cut in the on the first try. Turned out perfect. So that's it for those photos. Now for the video portion. So after you use the white tire marker to trace the template onto the rubber mat, you are going to use one inch tape like I had, or you can go get some colored duct tape. The duct tape will probably stick better to the mat than that green tape did, as you will see in this video. Now what I did when I had taped the tape to the mat, I went in about an eighth of an inch inside of the white line. So that way it meant that I was cutting a slight bit more off of the rubber mat than the template wanted me to. I did that so that way it would fit in there perfectly with a little bit of leeway. Because like I said, you don't want to make it fit so tight that you're gonna have to trim more off. You want to have just like a little bit of an extra gap, but not much to where it's really noticeable, but to where it fits in there perfect. So make sure that you follow the exact contours of the rubber mat. Don't deviate from it unless you have to like in a few of the corners that I showed you. So like in the wheel wells, they're kind of like uh, straight edges on the corners. Make sure you keep that the same way. And just reposition the tape to make uh, the lines more straight. Because as you noticed on the template, on uh, one part of the wheel well, it came in just a tad bit. So you want that to be straight. To make the cuts, you will need two two by fours like I had. I would recommend four, that way you can support the whole mat off of the ground and a couple tile planks. You can get those from your home improvement store or tile store for anywhere from like two bucks to five bucks. I had these spare ones at home, so I was able to use those. So the jigsaw will cut through the rubber really easy with that medium metal blade. But what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to place that two by four right next to the cutting line. That'll be for the vertical lengths along the length of the, the mat, mainly where the wheel well is, because you wanna make that as straight as possible and you wanna get it in one shot. Now the tile will be used for the smaller cuts that are on, that go the width of the, the mat. Instead of trying to flip around the two by fours, it'd be easier to open up the gap on the two by fours and place the tile on top of the two by fours and make that gap really small to be able to cut those smaller cuts. I do think duct tape will work a lot better. So as you can see, the tape is coming off a little bit every now and then, but I just tape it back down and just be sure to follow the contours of the mat and you shouldn't have any problem. And like I said, I moved the tape in like an eighth of an inch from the white line that I had made with the tire marker. Take your time. There's no rush. You're only gonna get one chance at getting the perfect cut on the rubber mat. With the cardboard template, when you cut off too much like I did on a few, few spots, I was able to tape a piece back on. You will not be able to do that with the rubber mat. And using the tile planks will really make a big difference for some of the smaller angles or when one of the cut is too close to the edge you can use the tile to get that gap even more closed up than you would with the two by fours pushed together.
Even though the cutting process was speeded up, the DeWalt blade cut through the rubber with ease. The part number for the DeWalt blade is DW3774H-2. It's a three inch T-shank blade with 18 teeth per inch. You would think uh, a blade with bigger teeth would cut through easier. No, you need uh, finer teeth. And like I said earlier, make sure the gap between on both sides of where you're gonna be cutting is as tight as possible. And you'll get a nice straight cut on the first try. So as you can see by the scrap pieces, I didn't cut off that much. And as you can see by this piece here, this is from one of the wheel wells. I cut off a half an inch all the way around and I stuck with the lines of the mat on the corners. I think this might be the right word. I can't stress enough. I guess that would be the right word. Take your time. <laughs> you only get one shot and you wanna make sure it's perfect. Before I hop in the truck, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my mess, and then I'm gonna move the truck to get it in position to drag the mat in the back of the truck because this mat is freaking heavy. I'm gonna look it up, see how much this thing weighs. It's a perfect fit. Now and all I have to do is to tuck the corners in underneath the welded tie down points. I'm exhausted, very sweaty, very tired, very weak. Still recovering from my minor stroke and focal seizure. I need a beer and this mat is fucking hot. So as you can see from this photo, I didn't cut off that much. The ones around the wheel well are half an inch. Some of the other pieces, I think I went to three quarters. This is the right rear corner, nice and tight. This here is the rear left. Damn, I'm good. Here is the driver's side wheel well housing. And as you can see, it's a perfect fit. Here is that front left corner. Now I know it looks like I didn't cut it right in the very left hand corner, but with a drop in bed liner, you have uh, 
the angled piece from the drop in bed liner that goes on an angle so the mat is kind of like riding up on that uh that angle no big deal i think it looks awesome and here is the front right corner same exact thing very nice fit and then here is the passenger side Willwell housing i hope i'm using the right word on that <laughs> took quite a few takes so now for the last photo, this is what the mat looks like in the truck, caked with a shitload of Meguiar's natural shine. <laughs> and it does look good. Well, that's a wrap up on another how-to video of Paul Henderson. This one was the modification and the installation of my Chevrolet bed mat in the back of my truck. If you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, that really helps out my channel, and the bell icon, and you get notifications as new videos come out. If you want to make a donation to my channel, tap the super thanks button located underneath the video, and you can make a small donation. Everything I get goes back into my truck. And um, I guess that's it. So uh, there should be some bloopers, just a few. So stay for that. I will also do a slideshow of the truck and the bed mat so you can actually see what I did to it. And um, just so you know, I did, uh, I did use Meguiar's natural shine protectant in the entire bed and <laughs> on the bed mat. It is pretty slippery. Normally I don't um, do the back of the bed liner with uh, this stuff because it makes it extremely slippery. So. I'll never do that again, but it did look nice for the video. <laughs> yeah, that's not smart. But anyway, with all that said, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. And uh, be sure to stay for the slideshow and the bloopers. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day. Oh, one more thing. Um, may the back of your bed stay dent and scratch free. Have a good day. Bye. And hopefully, no dogs, no airplanes. And if there is, I'm gonna bitch about that too. <laughs> really? Ah, oh, fuck you, dogs. God damn it. Yes, it is. Whoa, and I just hit the fucking camera. And that DeWalt blade cut through the lump, <laughs> lumber, lumber, whatever, I don't know what I said. What do people drive by? I can't, I, sh I should put a sign over there that says no driving, filming in process. That's pretty much what I cut off 
all around of it, except they're for their bat, 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 bat. <laughs> son of a biscuit or son of a bitch, motherfucker. Is there someone coming by? <clears throat> Damn it, forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> Must have had a brain fart. That's not funny. Today, I'm having the best day possible so far. Nothing has happened, but then again, I'm not really doing anything. I'm just standing in front of this camera and videotaping myself, which is easy because I'm a video whore. <laughs> and that's not nice either. I just called myself a hoe. No airplanes, no jackhammers, no dogs, no one cutting wood. So that is it. Here is my clapboard. I'm out of here.